Welcome back to Just The Facts, y'all. My name is Jimmy, and here is our next um, playoff series preview and prediction video. As y'all can tell by the title and thumbnail, we got Hawks um, versus, well, Knicks versus Hawks. There we go. Um, in a 4-5 matchup, and this is the most, probably the most interesting matchup out of the entire playoffs from the standpoint of these are two franchises, two teams that haven't made the playoffs in the past, in the past couple years or so. Um, and it's, it's just two fresh teams, man. Let's get some refreshing teams. We always see the Lakers. We always see the Nuggets. We always see the Blazers. We always see um, in the East. We always see the Bucks and the Heat and the Sixers and all these teams. Knicks and Hawks. We haven't seen these two teams in the playoffs in a minute. And seeing them here now... Um, with two relatively young teams. It's good to see, man. If you would have told me that um, the Knicks and Hawks would be playing in a 4-5 matchup back in December when the season started, I would have told you you're crazy um, because um, I thought the Knicks would still want to be one of the worst uh, teams in the league. And I thought the Hawks would have been a playoff team, but not um, as good as they have been. Um, and that's obviously in large part due to Nate McMillan becoming the head coach and him kind of changing the culture um, overnight there in Atlanta but first of all we got to start off talking about this Knicks defense and um, how they're going to play um, Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks high-flying offense um, obviously coached by who I think should be coach of the year and uh, Tom Thibodeau how will the Knicks defend Trey Young now I will say right off the bat Trey Young um, has had a couple teams that he's really really struggled against uh, this season and guess what? The Knicks are one of them, of course. The Knicks being one of the better defensive teams in the league. Um, I think they're number one, actually, um, in overall defense. Um, so Trey Young has really, really struggled. He's averaged 23 points per game, but on not good efficiency whatsoever. Um, he does get to the line a lot uh, versus the Knicks. He's so, him getting to the line, obviously, is going to be a big thing here because the Knicks aren't going to give you anything easy. Yeah, they might um, foul you a little bit too many times, but um, they're not going to get you. They're not going to let you get easy looks. Um, and obviously, in this playoff scenario, Trey Young's not going to get easy looks coming off the screen. Trey Young going to the free throw line is going to have to be imperative for him. Um, that's first things first. Um, Alfred Payton and um, Frank Nilakina, whenever he comes into the game, they do a really good job. Of, and not to mention Derrick Rose, they do a really good job of guarding guys, um, especially Peyton and Neil Akina playing Trey Young, um, as well as they did in the regular season. Um, I expect that to um, kind of extend here throughout to the playoffs. Now with Trey Young, we're obviously going to see a ton of pick and rolls with Capella and John Collins, um, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see how the Knicks guard that and how how well they guard that action, um, because obviously Trey Young is one of the best in the floater games in the league, but he's also one of the best uh, with the lob threat uh, to Clint Capella, who's, who's one of the better lob catchers in the league. S uh, so is John Collins, uh, by the way. Um, so Nerlens Noel having to, you know, kind of guard Trey Young, make sure he doesn't get into that floater game and kind of um, guard the rim at the same time. Um, obviously, he's going to have help, but Nerlens Noel is going to have to be disciplined. I know that's one thing he's really struggled with over his the course of his career, but he has been exceptional this season, and that's due to a large part that he is more disciplined. He's not jumping for everything like he used to, and then obviously the guys helping off of that. The Knicks are obviously a great defensive team. They're going to scramble around. Um, they're going to make the Hawks work hard for everything. Um, they're going to scramble, get out to shooters, and things of that nature. And Herder, Bogey, Go. They have to attack these closeouts because there's gonna be some wild closeouts for the Knicks. They just they're gonna scramble all over the place, and they got just gotta take advantage. That's one way you can kind of exploit the Knicks. Um, your ball movement has to be sharp. Um, the ball security has to be sharp because the Knicks will take it away. They're gonna have to do all those things, um, and I think that starts with I starts with Bogey because. Um, he's the second best scorer on this team. He's, he can score in a variety of different ways. He can score off of catch and shoot. He can score off of isos. He can score off of pick and rolls himself. He can cut to the basket. Um, Hawks do a pretty good job of cutting to the basket um, and, and things of that nature. So um, Bogey, Herder, Gallo, they're all in the same boat of um, having to create plays and step up um, when it's really, really needed. 
I, f I forgot to mention this, I don't know how. Another thing that would help out the Hawks a lot offensively in this series is John Collins making the right play um, off those off those pick and rolls with Trey Young, as well as Capella to a lesser degree. Um, but um, for, for John Collins to really, really be successful in this series offensively, um, his rolls to the bat when he's rolling to the basket, he has to make the right play. Whether it's go right up with it, whether it's shoot the 12 foot mid range, whether it's um, kick it out to the weak side shooter, um, he has to he has to be sharp in that area as well. Um, his three point shot has hasn't even gotten better. It's going to be interesting to see how the Hawks play it um, from an offensive standpoint. Like if they're gonna be moving the ball and putting the ball on the floor and going to the basket, being aggressive against the Knicks' aggressive defense, I think they can find some real success there. But if they're gonna be timid and uh, settle for jump shots and all of this all, and shoot some BS, they're not gonna come anywhere near winning this series. Um, that's just how I see it. With Nate McMillan as the coach, um, I expect him to make some adjustments throughout the series, of, of course. Um, as the series goes on um, but I don't know if his adjustments will be good enough to beat this tough 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 Tom Thibodeau coach defense on to the Knicks offensively um, how the hell how the hell they're gonna stop Julius Randle how the hell they're gonna stop Julius Randle you know you might think from a physical standpoint that John Collins matches up nicely and he does from a physical uh, standpoint what is John Collins 6'9 6'10 athletic as hell um, can move his feet um, things like that but he couldn't he couldn't I mean Julius Randle's mopping the floor that guy man during, during the regular season um, like, how, like how I said Trey Young had his worst um, some of his worst games against the Knicks Julius Randle has had some of his best games against the Hawks. Um, this season. Actually, he has played the best against the Hawks more than any other team. Um, averaging 37, 38 points per game. Um, I think he's averaging a triple-double um, as well versus the Hawks. So that's telling me that they're not stopping him scoring the ball and that's not stopping him from playmaking. As we all know, Julius Randle has turned himself into a, a bona fide star player. Um, and that's due to him making insane strides with his jump shots. He hits so many tough shots um, and he's so consistent with it. And the, from the standpoint that his vision is so good, his passing ability um, is so good out the post. He can play a little bit of point forward um, and he, he can just do a lot of things, man. And the Hawks, just, they, just have, they just don't have an answer for him. Maybe John Collins just needs to play better and just needs to be a little more aggressive towards him um, and physical towards him. Um, but even then, like, Julius Randle's a strong ass dude. So I don't know what they're going to do, man. Maybe you put. I was thinking about this series, man, and I was like, maybe you put more size on him and go with Click Capella on Randle. But maybe Randle's handle's too good. For Capella to even, you know, stay in front of him. Um, I was just trying to find a couple solutions for the Hawks defensively. Maybe it's just load up on him. But I was thinking about, hey, what if the Hawks load up on him? Well, like I just said, Randall is an exceptional passer, averaging what six assists this season. He's going to find RJ Barrett open. He's going to find Derrick Rose cutting to the basket. He's going to find Reggie Bullock wide open for three. And there's nothing you can do at that point, man. You have to, I guess, pick your poison here and you have to live with something. Either, you know, let Julius Randle go off and you stay home on shooters because the Knicks, they have half their rotation is shooting over 40% from three. RJ is shooting 40% from three. Rose is shooting over 40% from three. Reggie Bullock is shooting over 40% from three. Um, Freight Neil Keen is shooting over 40% from three. Although that might be a little bit deceiving. Like, these guys are not missing shots like that. Um, although they don't really shoot too many three-pointers. Um, they're actually towards the bottom in the league in like three-point attempts per game. Um, but they are like top three in, in percentage. I think the biggest thing for the Hawks defensively is are they going to scramble back? Because there are going to be moments in time where they have to double Julius Randle. He's just that good now. They're gonna be moments in time, but they have to get out to Reggie Bullock, who's shooting 40% from three. They're gonna to have to get out to RJ Barrett. 
and if the Knicks are moving the ball correctly, they're going to have to force the Hawks to scramble. And with the Hawks not having, in my opinion, not having the personnel to really, really be successful in, scram in scrambling defense, I think that can bode well for the Knicks. Like, I think DeAndre Hunter is going to play in this series. Um, he's going to help out a little bit. Uh, he's a long, athletic, switchy, switchy type of defender. Um... Herder is an okay defender, but it's nothing to write home about. Like Gallo, you can attack. Um, he's slow footed. Like Bogey, he's not as fast laterally. Like, and obviously Trey Young, you can you can attack. He's he's miniature. Now D Rose is also going to be a big part of the series. It's not just all Julius Randle. D Rose has been absolutely outstanding. RJ Baird has been absolutely outstanding. Emmanuel quickly has been absolutely outstanding. Although. I don't know how much he's going to play in this series. Um, I guess it just depends how he's playing defensively because obviously Tibbs is going to value what you do on the defensive end more than what you can do offensively. I'm going to see RJ Barrett perform. He is, um, if not a most improved candidate, he is the next thing to a most, a most improved candidate. Um, he's been absolutely amazing this season. I don't see a way these, the Atlanta Hawks beat the Knicks, man. I just... I just don't unless unless Trey Young just goes nuclear or something like that or you know I can see the Hawks winning winning in this way if Trey Young Bogey Gallo Herder if if like three of those four guys average twenty plus and on on a really good efficiency I don't really see that happening. With this Knicks defense, man, they're so disciplined, man. Both sides of the ball, honestly, it's like they don't really turn the ball over too damn much. Um, like they know what to expect out of Tom, Tom Thibodeau knows what to expect out of them. With that being said, give me the Knicks in six. I'm rhyming with that one. I'm gonna go with the Knicks to win this series in six games. Um, I expect it to be a really good series, though. I could see it going seven. Um, with the Hawks, but probably be that probably that by that point, um, Trey Young's like exhausted of being double teamed all game long, being trapped all game long. Um, so I'll go with the Knicks in six, man. Um, this is gonna be a real interesting and fun series, um, a refreshing series, man, to say the least, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty fun to see, man. Um, but y'all, let me know what y'all think about this series, man. Knicks Hawks, I think it's gonna be an interesting series, man. Um, who wins and why. With that being said, this is Jimmy from Just the Facts, and I'm signing out. Peace.